Buenos dias, mi amigo. Como esta? We're out here in the beautiful Puerta Plata. The ocean, my friend. Buenos dias, mi amigo. <laughs> Me climb the tree. <laughs> I don't know Spanish for that. <laughs> yes, I'm in the tree. It's not falling from the ground up. I didn't go far up. So let's talk about the addiction to trucking. Addiction to trucking. Hopefully. Hopefully they don't run me out the tree. See the guy staring at me over there. He has a uh, badge around his neck. Kind of stands out. I look like the average grounds guy. They may deem this as a safety hazard, potential liability, lawsuit. Anyone? I wouldn't dare. Any fool who would, or any person who would climb the tree to shoot a video and happens to fall and hurt himself or her girl. Should not be allowed to file a lawsuit and I wouldn't dare. Anyway, um, addiction to trucking. Oh, there's an animal. I was surprised I hadn't seen any this type thing of insects. Up this little bit spider. Bitty spider. Then the DJI Osmo is amazing. Woo! <laughs> now it already is pretty. Okay, you can see it, but no detail. I wouldn't expect it. It already is pretty amazing though. I like it. I have the action. Okay, I'm getting off topic, right? So the reason I say trucking is addictive, and I think some of y'all probably already realized that, is it's easy to get caught up in the lifestyle and this is what I think is important to realize if you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs then uh, adventure is one purpose is one security is one uh, unpredictability is in in there as part of one of the let me let me look at it let me make sure I'm saying this correctly regardless of whether it's in there or not if you think about it these are the things that makes life interesting trucking provides all of these elements if you think about it obviously you know the unpredictability is there but the venture is there and you may think adventure is supposed to be all fun and games and you know animals uh, enjoying places sightseeing you're doing that inevitably as a truck driver you're going to different places you know you're not necessarily partying there but you're always going to different places sightseeing is inevitable the animals you see stuff uh, depending on where you're from you know you may see animals you never saw before and many times unexpectedly crossing the road or in the tree like for me now i'm always i'm always on the maybe everybody doesn't see as many animals as i do because i'm always looking for animals but i know you see some because they cross the road right there in front of you but anyway let's move on um and so oh and the security you got job security you know you can have a job unless you mess your license up and even then you know people go a long time in that state still feeling like they supposed to be able to get a job because they got a cdl uh, or or was a truck driver and had a cdl and done lost it and trying to find a way to get back in and i don't fault them for trying to find a way to get back in but my point is they're so used to now I see insects. They they're not they're flying though. They're not in the tree. You're so used to being able 
to being gainfully employed and able to go from one trucking company to another. Hello, my family. Good morning. Mi amigo. How are you? ¿Todo bien? Uh, you okay? Muy bien. Excelente. Si. Excelente. Where are you from? Uh, United States, North Carolina. Wow, North Carolina. North Carolina. North Carolina. Carolina Norte? Yeah. In Spanish? Okay. Uh, I remember today, Michael Jordan, you came in the North Carolina, Michael Jordan, the NBA, you remember? Uh-huh. Oh, he's the best. That's <laughs> somebody was talking to me about him yesterday. My friend, you, you stay here in the hotel? Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, I don't have my wrist Are thing on. Yeah, the security is saying me. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I understand, yeah. No, no, no problem, no, no problem, no problem, okay? Enjoy. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, thank friend, you. Enjoy. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. <laughs> I don't wear my wristband. I wore it for three days and then I went to Santiago. And I say, hey, man, I'm not going to be all the way in Santiago with no wristband. So I'm with, I'm I took it off. Life. And I have it in my pocket. But it's good to know, like, uh, I don't know how many times I've been approached about the wristband. So it's good to know that they actually check and you're on a resort. And they're going to con continuously interrogate you if you don't have it prominently displayed so that they know who you are that's that's great and you know it's very interesting I'm coming back to it in a second but this is a good opportunity to point out something because you you see someone else in a situation and it's easy to pass judgment on that person in that situation what I'm talking about is a lot of news stories you see uh, especially with the police and you go straight to that person what do they do this that the other and it's, it is true but as an observer it's easy to do that when you are the person that is involved with the one-to-one -the, -one, the question is then how will you respond because a lot of people have the victimhood mentality and don't even realize it. they can see it in other people quite often but they don't realize it themselves so you know I, I've seen people where I'm pretty sure they would be offended, mad, because they get questioned about their wristband, and that's ridiculous. Just like I've seen truck drivers in the truck stop. It's not exactly the same thing, but close enough, where the person is only doing their job. Common sense don't tell you that it's nothing wrong with them asking you for ID to cash a check. <laughs> and people get mad, actually get mad about that. Look at the little lizard. He's looking at me. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. You okay? How are you? How are you, buddy? Como esta? Como esta? glitchy there that's one thing I like right there I could flip the camera around like that and it's somewhat smooth because it's with the push of a button not literally a button it's an icon on the screen I suppose we been looking up Maslow's hierarchy of needs right I think I spoke enough about that but anyway it never bothers me that's my point is that there are things that happen to us that we should be actually uh, appreciative of but because we, we're so easy to take on a victim mentality and instead of stepping back looking at the bigger picture appreciating something that should be appreciated like basically th these guys are doing a great job for questioning someone like that but there are people who would actually be offended and get mad and get an attitude and let the whole thing ruin the day and try to say something to the front desk for them being questioned. It's ridiculous. But anyway, uh, I hope that message got through. Let's look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs. There is a stand for this camera. I have a, uh, a link in the description. 
but there's a stand there's a mic that goes with it i got all of it on me but it actually produces great sound i don't know if the waves are going to drown it out we'll see soon enough maslow's hierarchy of needs oh man i don't need to help just self-actualization which is morality creativity spontaneity acceptance experience purpose meaning and inner potential that's all the way to the top trucking is a meaningful job you know that you are contributing to the economy you know that people are waiting for the stuff that you're bringing to the stores you know that the uh, businesses need the product in order to produce they need raw material in order to produce finished goods I don't need to keep going. Obviously, it's an important job, so you can get that purpose out of it. You can get that meaning, that inner potential. Um, you know that you can use trucking as a tool to create wealth. If you don't, now you do. And if you need a course, I'm working on it. Sign up below. And if you need one-on-one, -on -one, website is below. Um, Self-esteem. Trucking provides that because you gain confidence with especially uh, your experience because again you're reinforcing the idea that as you turn the corner and you hear people say they went from one job to another you see people uh, making more than you there's something to aspire to you're in a position direct in line to being able to achieve that you know there is a pathway and, and you know most people know that there's many pathways in order to make more than you're currently making by uh, getting uh, going to other companies first and foremost is what comes to people's minds but getting your endorsements and specializing and all that so where was I? you're going to have better confidence achievement again is in there um, because you can achieve these things they are obtainable respect of others we not me well yeah me too we complain about having a lack of respect from others or oh, respect of others. You respect people who are ahead of you in the trucking game. Uh, I don't know how that is. It's part of self-esteem, though. But anyway, uh, it's there. The need to be a unique individual. A lot of people get into trucking because they are to themselves to a degree. Uh, when it's outside of money as the main driving factor so that in and of itself shows the amount of individuality there are among the people who are drivers so could it not be fulfilling for those who have the need to be a unique individual because that's what you feel like you in the truck you can do whatever you want to do you can do it how you want to do it if you're solo you can live how you want to live you can set it up the way you want to set up to a certain degree as a company driver but you definitely you know, there's, you have freedom to individualize. You can decorate the truck the way you want to um, as far as you're not drilling holes and everything. So all of that is there. I'm just on, I'm, 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 that's second down from the top. Love and belonging. Now there's a lack of this for many truckers. Friendship, family, intimacy, sense of connection. In the traditional sense of the word, but guess what? You have a brotherhood most of us see that some people complain that there is none anymore but there, there is there are certain cert, certain things for example whether you claim it or not whether you believe it at an intellectual level or not is there and you're in it you know that there are people who are going through in a unique experience unlike most of the population that you can identify with and that identifies with you that's brotherhood right there so it's there inherently and you experience that whether you want to admit it or not. You can complain about it not being there, but it's there. Um, anytime you go to a truck stop, you are in the majority. So you have that sense of um, security, uh, like people who might be more, what do you call it? Um, insecure or or whatever people who like like might not want to 
do other types of jobs, it might be easier to be a truck driver because you're around people that are similar in nature to you as far as the lifestyle. So there is belonging and then love, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> That's actually some of the things that causes a lot of pain out here, but you know, plenty of truck drivers have a have a decent peer group and support group with love of family, whether whether it's relatives or their own offspring and, and wife and partner, a significant other. But even if you don't have that, you have the other truckers. So there is a sense of belonging and love. Safety and security, I already spoke on that. Health is not one of the main things for a lot of truckers, but employment, property, you know that you're, if you drive and if you manage your money correctly, you'll have the opportunity to acquire property, security, safety of family, and social ability. Again, if you manage your, your money, then you know your ability to, uh, your ability in that regard only improves. If you have the money set aside and you are able to get a truck, in your, at least in your mind, because things are changing as far as having your own truck and making enough of a profit to set enough aside in order to actually contribute contribute to the stability in a meaningful way you really have to be good at investing that money and and using that money in order for it to actually build up and grow and give you the financial stability that you might have assumed it would provide when you first got a truck and job that is if you go as an operator if you stay a company driver and you keep doing what you can in order to make more money as a company driver, you good because you don't have those expenses. And you can set aside a lot of money if you don't create bills to go along with that money. Anyway, so the safety and security is there, the physiological needs. Now, where is Zach talking about? Breathing. Oh, going back to safety and security, you know, a lot of drivers are becoming more healthy, but that's in your hands. You know, a lot of them don't even, it doesn't register the need to be more healthy. So since they don't necessarily sense the need, it's not taken away from the experience. Is he just now running up there? <laughs> so, and breathing, food, water, shelter, clothing, sleep. All right, you got your shelter right there with you all the time, your whole job. And that condo in that truck breathing you're gonna do that <laughs> no okay food your second home the truck stop is filled with food i know y'all want to say yeah junk food yeah all of it ain't junk food that's just what a lot of us choose but anyway point is you don't worry about where your food gonna come from you don't worry about where your water gonna come from or your shelter or your clothing. You can even buy clothes in the truck stop. You got a bed right there. Sleep is part of the physiological needs. You're not breathing the best air, actually. There's diesel particulates. It's something that I've been planning on doing a video about. And it's not talked about enough I don't think health is talked about enough, but y'all know I talked about it enough, but the air quality is not something that I've talked about enough, but I will mention it here. Uh, hopefully I'll get around to an entire video, but schools in California are, well, I don't know if it's the entire school system. I just re remember reading an article and this may be related to a county, but, and this is from years ago, so I, I may fumble with the details a little bit i'm just giving you a general idea of how serious this problem is but there was a school system or at least a school that was near an interstate and they shut that thing down until they can get 
and air conditioning system well they're trying to figure out i think they were trying to figure out solutions because when they tested that air quality and i think it was making kids sick we stay in the truck stop where it's nothing but diesel all day every day the air quality has got to be interesting <laughs> nah terrible man so you might want to consider some type of air purification for inside the truck anyway so does it make sense of what i'm saying and that's just looking at the the science and the psychology behind and why i say that i may be addicted to trucking is because i'll be at home well first of all and i, I may be addicted to learning or oh, i'll be at home and call myself wanting to take time off or taking time off next thing you know i'm just looking for a load i'm on the load board looking for a load and if i find one that's good enough i'm out of here vacation cut short he's still checking me out he's going from place oh well i guess he's going by his business now he just moved again where you go oh still going up the tree he was over here then he was over there just looking oh this thing that went crazy Oh, no, there he is. And now he's up there. So, yeah. The addiction of trucking. And so, I figured, you know what? I think I cut myself short. So, the main, the main, uh, meanwhile, I'm studying how to do all of these things while I'm on the road so that I can transition out of trucking. And I'll learn how to do one thing. The next thing you know, I said, okay, I got that in my toolbox. Let me go learn this over here. They're somewhat related. They can build upon each other and it'll, it'll give me more options. Well, I keep acquiring all these new skills that fade because over time, the next new thing come after that and that thing is not as relevant as it used to be. So you really learned it for nothing at the end of the day. Not for nothing, but you know, you're not making use of any of this stuff that you learned. So you mess around, you. So I think part of that has to do with just being addicted to trucking and, and resisting the transition out of it, you know? And so how I ended up here in Dominican Republic is I was taking some time off. I said, I'm going to, I said the rates are terrible. I need to generate another stream of income for the business to keep the business running smoothly. Then I also want to start another business outside of it. But I just didn't want to truck, set, shut the trucking company down. I want to be able to jump in the truck and take a load when I want to, or eventually hire get a better truck hire drivers keep the company open and maybe just grow the company so that it will be something where people can actually use to drive a company that people can actually drive for that actually cares about how they treat the drivers but i don't know if i want to deal with that uh, unless i meet someone who is interested in running such an operation i don't feel like running that is i'm I want to get into other things. I more so are am interested in helping people in business now, and in particular with marketing and applying technology to their business and automation and AI and stuff like that. I love I love that stuff. I love all of that stuff. As you can see, how much I use Adam to help me out. But not today. Sorry, Adam. No worries, Hervey. I'm on vacation, no, too. No, no. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Maybe I'll work you in here somehow. Anyway, uh, yeah, y'all, so what y'all think? Do y'all feel like y'all addicted to trucking? Uh, does it make sense what I'm saying? And do you feel like you're addicted to trucking? Is that something you've experienced? So let me know. Let me know. 
And is there another topic that you would like me to go into in a long form similar to this for a podcast? How many of y'all need that podcast in your life? Let me know. But uh, now, to end this video, I will give you some... I will tell you some of the videos that are, are on my mind. I mentioned some things in other videos, but I'm telling you, I feel less energy toward those things now. After being here, I'd much rather do new things that are on my mind. For example, I hadn't taken a vacation in over 10 years, more than 10 years actually. And again, well, I already told you about time off. So I think about it, you know, we deserve a vacation. And I don't know, I don't know how many owner operators are, are like me, just don't take time off, especially not now. You can't, just can't normally. But uh, hey, we need somewhere to go to. We need a way to get away. We need a place to get away. And why not the DR? Cost of living is lower, so the money you spend while you're here is going to go a long way. And I'm out here making connections. And the market, you don't know what to invest in. You don't know how much the volatility is going to be around. You don't know when they're going to be busting off rockets and whatnot and where. So that's going to move the market. You know, it's interesting. You know, overall it's going up, but you don't have as much as control as you would like. Um, the world is not as quiet and stable as it once was. Check out the unit, uh, coconuts. Y'all have to excuse him. It's his first time out of the country. See you. just be walking and they'll be on the sidewalk hervey when they fall on the sidewalk um, it's because they're no good so, so and i love real estate i just sold my house that's a different video but i sold my house i'm about to sell both cars and well i did tell you, say in another video that your number one investment is in yourself and that's where the largest amount of my investments from now on are going until I get to a wonderful place. But yeah, I'm saying all that to say, I checked out some property Two -two. out here in the Dominican Republic. Tuesday, I'll be going to check out some more property. Today, I'm supposed to be going snorkeling. I don't know where them guys at, but I'm gonna shut this thing off and go over there and check it out. See if they have they gotten here they, over there somewhere. But, uh, hey, what I'm trying to say is two things. One, we're going to start this trucking travel, trucking travel channel. I need to learn English better. I need to get better at communicating English before I be out here trying to learn Spanish. What do you think? I got a, I, I got a feeling that I'm going to be able to speak in Spanish better than I'm able to speak in English or communicate in Spanish. Hervey. What are you saying? Than I can in English. Well, anyway, um, trucking travel. Yeah, that's my new idea. That's what I'm excited about. Because the next place is Ghana. And then the next place is, uh, I don't know. I don't know yet. Thailand, Brazil, Belize. I like the idea of going to places where I can actually invest. That's what I like. That's what. That's what I'm feeling right now. So anyway, I may leave Dominican Republic with an investment of, in real estate. So I have one opportunity for you guys, and that is for you to be able to invest in DR, same way I'm investing in DR. And then the other opportunity is, of course, 
just being able to take some time off. Now the resort I'm staying at right now is a family centered resort. By the end of this week, I'm gonna go check out the uh, more couples, romantic, adults only resort so that I can tell you what that's like. So I got a lot of footage to upload. And we... <laughs> Two. Smiley. Thress. Thress. I said Thress. Thress, eh? Oh, that's a that's that's a bar on the beach. That's what they, do. they got a bar on the beach, not a bar. They got these stations everywhere. I need to check out this spot right here. Got these stations everywhere. Smiley Nolly. One of the interviews. I can't wait to see how this footage is gonna be when it flips around like that, cause it's smooth until the last stage, and then it jerks in the place. But one of the interviews is with one of the guys at, uh, at one of those little stations like that. And he's telling me about it. Two things that I am thinking about is one, investing for truckers, and two, traveling for truckers. How y'all feel about that? Would you want to travel together as a group to different destinations? Dominican Republic being one, being the first, Puerto Plata, and then traveling out from there. I'm probably going to Sosua before I leave. And uh, the mountains, 27 waterfalls. I already did Santiago. And I'm going scuba diving. Scuba diving. I don't know what else. Good food, good food. Now I gotta get down from here. Herbie, don't crazy. forget you're off duty. No bueno. I mean, uh, Herbie, no problem. Don't jump. Easy. Don't. He jumped anyway. This is soft. I don't know what it is. I busted open. That's what she said. 